you for tuning in to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, November 28, 2013. It's Thanksgiving. Thanks for tuning in on the holiday. Tonight, we're going to have three unaired videos. And up first, it's Jordan Maxwell. He is going to talk to you about legalese and how to avoid the pitfalls that surround the legal jargon. <laughs> Maxwell. For those of you who have heard from me and know about me, uh, for those of you who don't know about me, for 53 years, starting back in 1959, I began uh, talking about secret societies and paternal orders and, and the uh, occult world of mysticism and religion and government, all the conspiracies going on in government and banking and uh, all of the chicanery going on in religion, the connections between religion and banking and the whole entire Western civilization system, what it was based on, lies, deception, corruption. So I've been doing this, talking publicly for the last 53 years about this uh, horrible mess that the world was in and was going to get worse. Well, now at 2013, uh, it's gotten worse. I was invited to go to movie studios at night and uh, recording studios <clears throat> and just do uh, slide presentations with a uh, slide projector on the sound stages of Hollywood talking about the uh, Illuminati and secret societies and the occult world and, and the Knights Templars and the secret societies of religion and how they impact government today and it's finally finally caught on finally it has finally caught on uh, I did a video many many years ago called Matrix of Power I did uh, something called Matrix. I just feel that I've done the best I could to wake my fellow man up. And uh, unfortunately for me and my people who are listening to me, I know, and it is very depressing to me, that I know I'm not going to be able to, to download 53 years of knowledge that I have a you know, I've accumulated so much I will never be able to tell anyone. And I do feel that that is a shame because I've been in the company of extraordinary people all my life. I put myself there purposely. So I've been in the company of a lot of people who are masters at what they do, masters of research and knowledge and understanding. Your body is a is a corporation. That's why when you die, you're a corpse. Because you are a corporation. You are a company. And as such, you know, you may be good company, you may be bad company, but you're a company by law. It's called International Maritime Admiralty Law. The law of money, corporations, the law of the sea. You are a company, a corporation. And therefore, anything you do is business. That may not be my business, that may be your business, but it's a business by law. Therefore, anything you do, which is your business, anything you do must have a license because it's called a business license. So if you're going to get married, that means one corporation is going to do business with another corporation. So you have to have a marriage license. Anything you do, you need to get a permit or a license. And in America, you have something called the Statue of Liberty. It is not the Statue of Freedom. It's the Statue of Liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he gets off a ship in the Navy. When you pull into port and you ask the captain if you can go uh, on land, if he gives you the permission, and he may not, but if you get permission to go out, you have liberty. Sailors call it, we got liberty. 
not freedom. In America, you have no freedom. You have liberty. Liberty means you ask permission. You get a permit. You have a license. A license is simply an agreement and a permit. A license is a permit to do something which without that license would be unlawful. So therefore you can't get married because you're a business. And she's a business. And what the two of you do is none of my business. But the point you need to understand is that you are a corporation. Your body is being bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange every day and you have no idea in the world how the world really works. So people talk about having to go to court, they talk about uh, how the government does this and the government did that, and people get scared to death because they got to go to court, which you should be scared of court. But why do people go to court? Because you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. Wake up. I've been talking about this stuff for 53 years, but nobody seems to listen to it very much anymore. The reason why you go to court is a game. It's like tennis. And how do you play tennis? You play with a, you play with a racket. So you, when you go into uh, a basketball game to play on the court, the whole idea is you have two teams. One team is a team of lawyers, and another team of lawyers. And the whole idea in a court because it's maritime admiralty, international banking law, uh, the whole idea is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So therefore that one team picks up the ball and they throw it in the over here to you. Now your team picks up and throws the ball back over their court. And then they pick the ball back and throw it back into your court and you have a judge who's the referee. You always have a referee, even at a baseball game. You've got the, you've got the, uh, the referee who makes the decision as to what really happened. I don't care what happened, he decides what happened. Whatever he says happened, that's what happened. Then the next thing you need to understand is that there's a gate, a fence and a gate in the courtroom, and people sit out here and the judge sits inside. Why is there a fence and a gate? Because the gate represents a water gate, like in the Panama Canal. When the gate opens, the water comes in and raises the ship up. So therefore, when you are called and you put your hand on the gate, you are opening up the flood gate under maritime admiralty law. But happily, Americans have no idea about any of this. But once you understand how this really works, and you begin to see how your body is over 70% water, and you are a maritime admiralty water product, and the way this thing is being played is very, very interesting. The words and the terms and the symbols and your body as a biological battery. We are a biological electrical unit. Therefore, if you are walk into the court and they call your name and you open up the water gate, you are now in hot water. And someone's going to have to bail you out. Once you understand that the bank and money runs the world, so the judge rules from a bench. Look up the word bench. It will tell you the word bench is a bank in Latin. Therefore, the judge rules for the bench or the bank. And the judge sits higher up. When you walk in, you'll see the judge sits up here. He's looking down on you. But you're looking up to the bank, the bench. Look it up in a dictionary. When a ship pulls into a harbor, it's got like eight hundred, let's say eight million dollars worth of Toyotas on the on the damn ship. It pulls into a harbor. It's got eight hundred million dollars worth of business on that ship, and it comes in on water. So we we say when the ship comes in, it parks at the dock. The ship comes in on water. Eight hundred million dollars worth of banking just came in on a, on ship. This is why I said banking is maritime admiralty, the law of the sea. So therefore, if you're going to do any business, then you need to get a you need to be part of this corporation. And the world corporation 
you have to have a, you are a citizen on board ship. So you have a citizenship, sportsmanship, scholarship, uh, you know, dealerships, courtship. And anytime you order something from a big company, they're going to ship it to you. Where a ship sits, when you go to the, uh, go to the harbor, where a ship sits is called berth. B-E-R-T-H. A ship is sitting in her berth. Therefore, any items that come off of that ship, she, all ships are she, always. Rocket ship, sailing ship, doesn't matter what kind of ship. If it's a ship, it's she. Under international law, all ships are, are female. Why? Because she delivers the product. The man manufactures, but the woman delivers the product. So when you have been manufactured and she, your mother, delivers the product, you are a product of two corporations. Maritime Admiralty Law, you or your mother was a corporation, your father's a corporation. Therefore you are the you are the joint new product of a, of two corporations. Ford Motor Company getting together with, with Suzuki. That's fine as long as you get a license because it's business, and anything that those two companies produce, the one who gave you the license is the boss. Because before that, you couldn't do it at all. But if the corporation gave you the permission to, pre to create a new product, fine, but the product belongs to them, not you. What if I told you the government has your baby's DNA? And in some states, that DNA is stored even without your consent. So once you understand that all ships are female, she sits in her berth, and any item taken off of that ship has to have its own certificate of manifest. It's called a certificate of manifest. And each car has to be represented. Does it have four doors, two doors, air conditioning, what color is it, how heavy is it, what, you know, this and this and that, and all the paperwork has to be correct for each item. So when you're born, Call a birth certificate. How much did you weigh? What race is it? Did he have two eyes? Was it one arm? You know, what, what color was he, etc. Because these are all vital signs for a product. You are a human resource. You're going to be bought and sold by the international banks in New York and London. Your body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. According to the uh, British and American it's called, there's a book you can get from the American Printing Office, or the U.S. Government Printing Office. It's called the Styles Book. Styles Magazine, or Styles Book. U.S. Printing Office Styles Manual. Styles Manual. And in the Styles Manual, published by the United States Government Printing Office, it tells you what the words mean correctly. When you go to court, and you're in a federal court, you're in a in a national uh, court of any kind, here are the words to use. Because the words you would use on the street don't work in a court. You better know what you're talking about when you're before a judge. You better use the correct term. Because if you use a wrong term, thinking you want, uh, that they will understand, no, now you're going to jail because you said the wrong word. So, a group of people got together back in 1871, before your grandma was born, 1871 and they formed a corporation after the Civil War. In the Civil War they called their, their company United States Corporation. It was a municipal corporation. And, they, and it was stipulated anybody who worked for the corporation is a member of the corporation. <clears throat> and so today, <clears throat> if you are a U.S. citizen, when you walk in a bank or any place, uh, you know, to uh, before some authority and they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? And you say yes. What you think they're asking you is, are you lawfully in America to do business? Are you lawfully here? Are you an alien? All right? And you say, no, I, no, I'm lawfully to be here. I'm okay. So then they will say, well, are you a U.S. citizen? And you say yes. What you think you're saying is that you're saying, yes, I am lawfully in America. That's not 
any good attorney will tell you, I'm going to ask you something under oath. Think about what I'm asking you. Because if you answer wrong, you're going to jail. Now my question is, are you of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying in this court that you are a U.S. citizen? And you say, well, I'm lawfully in America. Yeah, and I, I, I don't have any problems here. Sure, I'm a U.S. citizen. That's what I wanted to know. Now you're going to jail. Now you go to prison. Because you're not an American. You don't have American freedom. You don't have the Bill of Rights. You're a U.S. citizen. U.S. is a privately owned corporation. That's a maritime admiralty corporation owned by a handful of men that you don't know anything about. And therefore, when you say that you're a U.S. citizen, that means I am an employee of a foreign corporation on the maritime law, and therefore my boss is in Washington, D.C., and I work for him. Oh, well now, if you work for him, then you are a U.S. citizen. And according to his policies, not the law of the land, but his policy, his policy is you can't do this, this and that, it's his policy, and you just broke his policy. So that's why we have police to back up the policy that the politicians who are the owner, who are the masters of the corporation. So the masters of the corporation make the policy and police back it up. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down, and it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women. Fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine, atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals, it's vegan-friendly, it's gluten-free, it's GMO-free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double-strength, low-price, InfoWarsLife.com, Survival Shield, the atomic nascent iodine available right now.